Okay, so this is our walk through the course. We're going to start in the Canvas shell. We're going to move on to the syllabus and then the calendar. Um, okay, so when you go into your Canvas shell, let's see, let's view it as a student and I'll get to see what you see and maybe I'll start fixing things. You'll get to this home page and the home page tells you basically how to navigate. It repeats my contact information um, and kind of tells you where to get help. Your to-do list will come up here and you can see what's on it already. First day of Nursing 417 is Monday, August 26th. Syllabus attestation due Sunday. Um, Labor Day is Monday, all the things. It starts adding in. My office hours are, office, are also included. Um, if there are changes to them, I will let you know, as I said. Okay, so announcements, very important to look at. Um, I don't think there's any in there now unless they were copied over from the last course. They are, but I'm going to have to get rid of all of them. Okay. Assignments. This is hopefully of interest to you. We'll go back to it, but let's go to modules because modules is where you're going to start learning, right? And you have your usual, like every nursing course, start here, um, accessibility services. I don't know that you need to use Kaltura, but they put it in every Canvas shell. Um, and then your BSM guidebook, all those things. Now under nuts and bolts, things like the program learning, the, all the learning outcomes and the course textbook information are included. Now, everything goes week by week with the dates and the content that we'll be learning in these modules. Now, if I leave student view and like open one up, you can kind of see something that I might have in there. Like you might have genomics goes to the movies and the introductory video, which I will post shortly, but let's go back to student view. Um, the content will open Thursday mornings. I don't like to post it too far ahead because when I do that, people like go straight to the assignments. They start trying to complete them without learning the material and they just check off the boxes and they get to the midterm. And when they get a 39, they cry. Um, so we're not going to do that but your content will load every Thursday. It's all kind of there. Um, and then this last one, I'm going to unlock that the instructions and rubrics. I have to add some things to it. Um, but probably by Monday at the latest, all of that stuff will be there so that you can start looking at what you're hoping to achieve. Um, let's go to assignments now. So when you go to the assignments tab, you're going to see a lot of stuff. Um, and it's all arranged by due date. So it'll kind of come up like this. Um, when you get to that assignment, just click it open like the, let's see, pedigree assignment. It's locked, but if I were to unlock it, you would see the rubric, you would see the instructions and you would have a place to submit. Um, again, I don't want people submitting pedigree assignments the first week of class before I've taught the material because I might be looking for specific things and, you know, they might miss those things. You have your discussions. Um, there are a few discussion boards. Um, every week you'll be prompted to do that. Now here's your syllabus. Oh, before I do that, let me go to the people page. This is where you're going to find your group members um, for the genetic disorder project. So you're going to go to groups and I'm going to open these up a little bit. All right, let me move my little face square here. Oh, come on. All right. So in the groups, you'll see there's th three groups of four. Um, this icon here designates the leader. You don't really have to do much as a leader. You're just the one who gets to submit the whole thing. You don't have to. Be, it could be very collaborative and very equal, but I only want one submission per group, so tag your it. Um, and I let Canvas randomly assign these. I do not want people changing groups. Um, it creates a lot of problems for me. Group projects in general, um, I find that if I do the random assignment, I don't have that one student who says, nobody wants to work with me, or I don't know anyone in this class and I'm too shy to ask. It kind of just puts the pressure off of all of us to do that. So, you know, that's something you might want to do um, is look at who your group members are and get to know them, you know, by the midterm, if you don't already know them. Um, your grades will be recorded here. 
you know, and you'll get to see any feedback I have. I hide the grades until everyone's are in. Um, so now I guess we can go, I'm going to go to this page, collaborations. It's saying access denied. Um, and I'm going to check into that on Canvas. On Canvas. Um, it is a place where you can collaborate with other group members. You'll have a shared, you'll have access to a shared PowerPoint through your Microsoft 365 account. That saves you from having to open your own PowerPoint, email people slides back and forth. You can kind of work, you know, independently. If you're a three o'clock in the morning person and someone else is an eight o'clock in the morning person, um, you work on your slides at your own pace and it's a shared document. So once you decide how to assign the work and who's going to do what part of it, it should go relatively easy. Um, okay, so let's go back. And the last thing I'm going to show you is the syllabus. So let's open that up. Here's my 417 syllabus. Okay, let's go all the way to the top. Now I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of surgery on this so that it meets your needs a little bit better. We are required to have this, a lot of stuff in there that, in my opinion, is not what most students are looking for. Um, there's my contact information. Now, the office phone, 21107, I am required to put that on there. I will tell you that I very infrequently get voicemails, and so I don't usually check them. Um, you're better off with email. Email is always better. Office hours, typically that's what they are. Occasionally, I might be asked to help with simulation, or there's a holiday, or there's a break, or I have some personal commitment, like a doctor's appointment, and there will be a change. I update the Canvas course calendar. I put it in an announcement. I'll put it on my door. Um, there will be no surprises. They are drop-in student hours. I'm not there to do other work. Um, so please, if you have any questions, concerns, you just want to, you know, talk about stuff, please come to my office hours. Um, I will give you sufficient notice for any change. In fact, I've already made some changes. Uh, course credit, you get three credits for this course. Typically, three hours in class, three hours on your own. Content does open Thursday mornings. It's already set to do that. It will remain open for review, like the Google Slides, the video lectures, that's all available to you. But the assignments lock down two days after the due date. You get two days grace, and I don't deduct points for two days. Or if you give me sufficient notice and you need more than two days, that's also okay. It's the people that just don't submit. I don't hear from them. And it's the end of the semester and they're missing like five assignments. That's what I would like to avoid. Um, and so you'll notice that it'll close. I'll give you a zero. I'm okay to change it. Um, but you need to stay on top because this work can pile up if you let it. The course description, genetics, genomics, epigenomics, relevance to health, illness, and especially nursing practice. I do try to make it relevant to you. Some people do not perceive the value of genomics in the context of nursing, but through your careers, that will change. I promise. Um, all the ethical, legal, socioeconomic, and technologic issues um, that are associated with genetics are examined. Now there's the university-wide policies. You all know about those. This is where you can do the surgery. So that was all page one. From page two <coughs> through page six, if you'd like to know how all of our learning outcomes align with the university itself and the program and the national standards and the things, you can keep those pages in your syllabus. Me as a student, two through six, I would download a copy. I would delete those pages. It's up to you. Just so that I had something more manageable to look at. Um, we do have a textbook. It's Barry Workman and Eggert. It's really a pretty decent textbook. There aren't that many for genomics. Hold on, let me move that. Um, there's used copies floating around. I think you can get any copy. I know the library has a copy. I have an extra if you need it. Um, but for some things, you will need it. Ricci, Kyle and Carmen is your 317 text. Kenner and Lewis, I don't even know if, you know, I don't think you really need to have that. Um, but it is cited as a recommended textbook. Oftentimes, the better sources of information are websites. Like the NIH has a human genome website. I will refer to it periodically. I'll give you links to pages that I think are interesting. Now, here's what you're probably most interested in. How am I graded? What are the assignments? Syllabus attestation you do for every course. Pass, fail, get it done by Sunday. I think you just type yes in the box. Then we have the weekly assignments. And this is your rats. There are little quizzes, discussion boards. Um, I love, hate them, whatever. I kind of like reading the discussion board post as a you know lurker who doesn't have to contribute. 
Um, and then there are some reflections. There's a reflection on mental health. There's an interactive case study. I guide you to a website. You go through the interactive case study, and then you answer the prompt. Um, and then there's a final reflection, which asks you, and it will be tied to the course learning outcomes. Those are worth 30% of your grade. That's a nice, decent chunk that is not really heavy exam based. Um, there is one exam for this course. It is the midterm. I will tell you that if you study, if you use all the materials I give you and you understand them and you reach out for help and anything you don't understand, you can do very well on that exam. But I have had people in the 30s um, because they clearly did not look at a single thing and they never had biology cover this content in high school or in any of their other coursework. So they just didn't know the things they needed to know to meet the outcomes. Um, it is worth 25% of your grade, uh, so try to do well on it. I will give you a very detailed blueprint. You'll have a week to do it on ExamSoft at home with access to your resources. Um, but there's so many resources. It helps if you know where to find stuff. So please don't blow it off. Um, pedigree assignment, 20% of your grade. Um, that It's important to know how to do a pedigree. And I give you lots of help and lots of pointers with it. Um, it will be based on a case study. It is not based on your own family history. You will need to use the case studies that I provide. You will select one. You will write an interpretive summary. I'll get to all that. Genetic disorder group presentation. We kind of went through the canvas shell. You are required to do peer review for that. We used to do it in the discussion boards. This time I just thought it was easier to do peer review. Um, all the guidelines are in the canvas shell. If you score below 78 on that midterm exam, you're going to have some work to do. You're going to have to go to the Student Success Center. You will have to make an appointment with me. And it's department policy that you would schedule tutoring sessions. Yeah. Um, if you are, if you do poorly on that midterm, in my opinion, it means that you did not do the preparatory work um, and didn't study. So save yourself the time of having to go to the Student Success Center and sit in my office and just, you know, pace it. Do it week to week. Um, here's some descriptions of the assignments, rats or quizzes in Canvas. I usually stick to 10 questions. You have three tries, the highest grade stands. Um, if they are not completed by the grace period, you get a zero, so don't blow them off. You won't see rationales until you do them three times. Please do not share correct answers and rationales with your friends. Um, this is a graded assignment. Discussion boards, very typical for a discussion board. You're going to have initial posts. Usually it's Thursday night. And then by Sunday night, you'll have to reply to two peers. The nature of a discussion means it has to happen in real time. So please, you know, try not to dump everything on Tuesday. And if you're later than that grace period, I won't accept it because it's not a discussion anymore. Nobody's going to read your post and you really didn't get anything out of theirs. Mm -hmm. Ed Puzzle lecture video assignments are not counted towards your grade. They are counted for attendance. Edpuzzle is an app I use. I upload videos like this one. I embed questions sometimes. Um, I can see who has viewed them. You can't skip ahead. If there's questions, you have to answer them. Um, that's your attendance. That's how I know you saw the lecture. If you accumulate three absences, three Edpuzzles go undone, especially if it's a consecutive absence problem, then I know that something's going on and you're struggling because there's no reason for that. I will make a, I will email you as a courtesy, and then I will refer you to the Student Success Center to see what we can do about time management and getting you to complete that assignment, even though it is past bail and does not count towards your grade. Um, reflections. This is actually a case study. Why don't I edit this? Um, do the interactive. The other two sections do this a little bit differently. I do a case study on mental health. And you're going to write a reflection on a prompt that I give you. There are instructions and rubric for this in Canvas. You will also have a final reflection. Um, pedigree assignment. We kind of talked about it. It's a diagram of family history and you can look at it and it visually gives you some clues as to how patterns of inheritance might be working for that person in that family and what their risk might be and how you know, your interpretive statement is going to show how you might guide them differently towards screenings. For example, somebody has family history of colon cancer, they should get a colonoscopy at the age of the earliest diagnosis in their family history, minus 10 years. So if their uncle was diagnosed with colon cancer at age 45, they should be getting colonoscopies at 35. 
Um, and that's much earlier than it is for the general public. So you're, you're going to need to know a little bit about that, um, how you would advise this person. It's a one page summary and a diagram. Um, the genetic disorder group presentation, you have a group of three to four students. Your groups are all four for this course. Um, create a narrated presentation on an approved genetic disorder. There is a list that you can choose from. Um, there is a sign up. Mid-semester, we will do all of that. And there is a rubric for that in Canvas. Um, the withdrawal policy, the last day to withdraw is November 8th. A withdraw does, a withdrawal does not refund your tuition unless it's extreme circumstances or you have that tuition insurance. Um, and it does show up on your transcript, but it counts as a grade of W and it does not um, impact your GPA. Sorry, my husband's watching baseball in the back. If you hear screaming, I swear nothing bad is happening. I, except the Phillies are probably losing and that it's a bad thing, but whatever. Um, that's how you do the withdrawal if you need to do that. Attendance participation, it's recorded. The Ed Puzzles really are the way we do that. Um, and the completion of your assignments. Two day grace period built into each assignment in most cases, that will mean Tuesday nights. Work submitted within that two day grace period is not sub subject to deduction of points. And late work that is submitted with my permission obviously is not, um, not penalized. Use your Gene Mercy e email. If you don't, it goes to my spam folder. I don't check my spam folder. I mean, once in a great blue moon, somebody says, I sent you something and I didn't get it. I'll look there, but send it with your G Mercy U or go through Canvas. Um, you should utilize Canvas announcements. I use announcements very reliably. Some people are very good about reading them and some people are not, but that's really in an online asynchronous course, the best way I have to get in touch with everybody at once. I don't know that there's a public safety emergency in an online course, but whatever. Um, here's your calendar. I'm going to, you know, fix at all these assignments, but all the dates are here. All the topics are here. They make us add again, you can do a little surgery and just cut all this clinical judgment. I mean, this is like really more for our department to know that we're doing our job right. But for you as a student, if you find it distracting, just cut and paste the things you want or, you know, delete the things you don't. But this is the general pattern. And you can see December 6th is really our last day. Um, last day of ad drop is September the 3rd. So if you decide that I am not the teacher for you and you want a different section or you want to invite people to come in because you think it's great, September 3rd is your day. Um, last day to withdraw, we already said November 8th. There are a couple of days off. We have September 2nd. Labor Day, fall break, October 14th and 15th, Thanksgiving holiday, 27th and 29th. Um, I, just a heads up, I do work on the weekends at the hospital. And very often on these holidays, I will pick up extra shifts to be, you know, helpful to my colleagues. So you might not get a response immediately to an email. Um, last day of class for us, really all work is due on the 6th, but I will be entering grades no later than the 9th. And that gives you that two day grace period. Um, so if you're running late doing your exit interview and your peer review and all that in the final reflection, whatever it is, um, that gives me one day past the grace period. If everybody's done early, then I can just submit grades early and that's fine. Um, we do not have a final exam in that course. That's our syllabus. That's everything. If you guys think of questions for me, please let me know. Um, I am more than happy to answer them and I am available. All right, saving my changes. See you soon.